Okay, welcome back to HP Discover. We're in Las Vegas for HP's big customer event. All the top executives are here, all the customers are here, a lot of technical folks are here. Just a really, really good show. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Bethany Mayer is here, a multi-time Cube guest. She's the senior vice president and general manager of the networking business for HP. Bethany, welcome back. Thank you. So thank we you. heard. Excited to be back. Yeah, it's, thank you uh, again for taking your time. Uh, so we heard this morning big honking switches, and you guys are powering this uh, convention center. True. So you got good, <laughs> yeah. good props from Donatelli. So uh, yeah, give us the true. update on on the business. Sure. So the business has continued to go very well. We uh, just passed now our 14th consecutive quarter of growth uh, for HP Networking. We continued to take share again this quarter. Uh, from our competitors and um, we as you might have heard we're shipping now a whole new lineup of data center products as well um, and you know our SDN um, uh, offering portfolio continues to get bigger so we really have some great opportunities coming up and you know frankly lots of good customer discussions here uh, around our products and around what we can do for them yeah the whole SDN thing is really taken off you uh, you know Early on in the cube, you started to, to talk about that really before the industry really hopped on board, and certainly before the NICERA acquisition. A lot of the discussion uh, in the industry has been kind of geeky about overlays and protocols. And, you know, right. we, we were talking the other day about, you know, we're not hearing enough about management. What's HP yeah. doing in that, in that space? Well, so, um, you know, there are all the geek speak stuff that's really fun, and I like it too. Um, we can but geek out if you want. We, that's we can cool. geek out. I'm yeah. I like geeking out. I'm a girl geek, but anyways, um, so there's that, but also there's you know really what it does from a benefits perspective for the business, right? Because honestly, the network has been such a stumbling block for businesses trying to do things differently, whether it's you know acquire a company, whether it's add new applications, whether it's go to the cloud, whether it's you know have a big data application, whatever those things are, the 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 long pole in every project tent has been the network, how to provision it to map to whatever is new is needed. And of course, that just isn't going to work going forward. And so really what um, SDN does is it makes the, the network responsive to the business in the time frame that the business needs it to be. And that's the difference. It also automates a lot of the, what was frankly true, you know, uh, just nuts and bolts, Heavy bits and bytes, yeah. right? Kind of, you know, manual entry that just goes away, just goes away. And so these are huge changes. And sadly, they're huge changes because the network hasn't been any different for 30 years, but they're huge changes that need to happen anyways and that are happening as a result of SDN. So the conversations are always talking about um, ports, this, that, the other thing. In networking's always been yeah. rack and stack. But one thing that's coming clear, not only in our conversations earlier, but in the industry, is the notion of fabric. Right. So we're here, we talked with Broadcom, and, and people talk about the Internet of Things. The fabric conversation is really becoming more and more relevant. And that yes. kind of speaks to kind of the underlying, you know, geeking out about the SDN. So, you know, that is a, a top conversation. What conversations are you guys having around fabric? And, you know, uh, you guys have laid out your fabric vision. Yes. But how does that relate to the, what's going on in the main trends? You got cloud, you got mobile, you got yes. social, Internet of Things. Right. SDN brought on this whole software trend right. that you guys were first to ship. On the cube, you mentioned you guys were two years ago. You were the yep, first to first ship OpenFlow, so we're going to keep get the props out there yeah. so people can remember yeah, that's we were true. here. But what is the fabric conversation that yeah. you're having internally at HP and with customers? Well, so again, so I think the fabric. It's interesting because the fabric discussion of old was about boxes. It wasn't even a fabric. It was okay. How many boxes do you need to put together? And then that they call that a fabric, right? <laughs> when in reality, what you're talking about is really. Sorry, but that's it, that's true. true. Okay. true. Tied so, together, so it's a fabric. Yeah, so there you go, it's fabric, <laughs> ta-da! Um, but really what you need is you do need this connective tissue that goes between server storage seamlessly and that can deploy applications in a very, very quick, efficient manner, right? And that connective tissue can be anywhere. It can be in a server, it can be in a storage device. It can be software based. It doesn't have to be a bunch of boxes tacked together. And so I think that, that that's a paradigm that's changing as a result of frankly, more intelligent thinking about 
what is a fabric and then how to deploy that fabric in a logical manner given the amount of integration you can do in a company like HP. Are the customers savvy about that? I mean, when you go to customer discussions, are they, I mean, they don't say, give me a fabric, or do they, I mean, do they say, give me a fabric, or they, what are yeah, the, what they are the, well, they ask you what your fabric is, right? What exactly is your fabric strategy? And the discussion that we have is really around virtualization of the fabric. I mean, our, yeah. our fabric capability is a virtualized fabric, right? So intelligent, resilient framework that really provides fabric, uh, uh, a fabric for the, the uh, data center. Fabric for styles of IT. Exactly, you know? right, and you got a new suit. You get some good fabric and you make right. a nice... Yeah. Um, a new suit and you're good to go, that's great. We but, like but it, sports analogies, <laughs> HP yeah, right. design. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, just so gave you some go. great uh, sound bites for your next keynote. Right, but it, it is, it's important to know it's a, it's a different discussion. It's about, it's also about, so, so our fabric strategy is a software fabric strategy. It yeah. is not a port density fabric strategy. We have very strong port density, that's not the issue. Yeah, the it's, value creation for you guys is software, so you can ride the, quote, Moore's Law, or whatever law yes. it becomes, on performance on hardware. That's right. Whether it's a moonshot-like thing, or right. something new integrated, but right now the performance of the hardware is getting better, cores, multiple cores, but on the software, you have to then integrate across. Right. So, okay, let's take that to the next level. So, Internet of Things is a hot conversation right yes. now, and a real conversation, people are talking about how to connect the edge of the network. Right. Mobile device is the first generation yes. of Internet of Things. Maybe right. it's Google Glass and Fitbit or other things. So, that has to land on a fabric. So, small pieces of data. Yes. Are you guys involved in anything in that, with that that kind of approach and yeah, kind sure. of technology? Yeah, we, well, so, we have a really, really nice BYOD solution. And by the way, it's SDN enabled. Um, so basically we can provide, we have a BYOD solution that provides um, self-service onboarding, uh, that provides uh, tracking of devices and fingerprinting of the devices, right? It provides access um, control of where people can go in the network. It also, from an SDN perspective, we use our security application, SDN security application, which is Sentinel, to do, um, basically enable uh, security all the way down to the switch port itself so that if, if a device comes in with malware on it or it ha it's been to a bad website, instead of it having the traffic having to go through an IPS box sitting somewhere in the network, it actually is blocked right at the switching port. And that is actually a software strategy. Much so more granularity. Uh, Much more granularity. Yep. And it does what we've been trying to do with security and networking for years, which is dissolve a function like security into the switching plane versus, you know, basically taking all these boxes, again, back to our boxes talk, and, you know, having all these boxes in the network to try to support that. And, and virtualize that, which is different than the concept of, you know, compute virtualization was all about consolidation, yep. getting more out of the this underutilized resource, and networking's yes. different, you know, the ports aren't underutilized. It's different, it, well, so it, in a way it is kind of underutilized in the sense that, you know, if you have, as a good example, let's talk about link. Okay, Link is an application that generally is pretty hard on a network mm -hmm. because you've got these people you know, who want to run video simultaneously or they want to share a desktop and it requires a lot of bandwidth and it also, um, it, you know, it's all over the place, right? And so the issue with, with Link is what you do from a networking perspective is you generally have to over-provision the network because you don't want to make sure everybody gets a good user experience, about right? about the peak, yeah, right. okay. So, so with SDN, that all goes away because, and as we've done with our with our SDN controller, we um, wrote an application with Microsoft Link to basically integrate Link into the controller so that the network dynamically brings up a session for a link, for two Link users who want a session, brings up the link um, in the session, provides it with the priority, quality of service, and you know, all of the issue, all of the things that, that the session needs to be successful and have a good end user experience. And then when it's done, it dynamically tears it down. So you don't have to over provision the network. You actually don't have to do anything. So you free up those resources. Right. The network does the it pool. for you. Yeah. And so so that is an application that you know you can create with SDN that's very different than the way most folks think. But does that you, handle encryption, encrypted data too? Yeah, oh yes, it handles encryption, encrypted data. But the, but you, to your point about virtualizing the network and having it be better utilized, you've now better utilized a network without adding more bandwidth to it, right, to solve right. the problem, that's the idea. 
Well, to your other point about the labor content involved in yeah. configuring networks, right. uh, now you start to address that challenge. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you, in this has been interesting. This whole SDN, you know, paradigm shift. In, in about, I would say, in five years, this discussion about, well, we need to use a CLI. Oh my God, we got to go do the, you know, all the Perl scripts. That's just going to be yeah. noise. That is not going to be a discussion we'll be having at all. This right. is going to change that completely. Yeah, because that doesn't scale. Well, SDN it is just a, never will. I mean, SDN's been in, it's been a double-edged sword, right? I remember we were kind of dismissing it early on when we were first talking about it a couple of years ago. But it's created awareness yeah. to the mindset of shift. So, so you know, it's going to change and, and, and get better dynamic policy enforcement, it encryption, will. et cetera. You mentioned. So I got to ask you about security because we, sure. you know, that's one of the pillars of Meg's, you know, vision: oh, big data, mobile, absolutely. cloud, and security. Right. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you play in that. So what? What are you guys doing on security? What's the new? Any new information? Any new announcements? Well, so we don't have we don't have any new announcements. But what I would tell you is that we work very very closely with the security business unit with our Gillens team, and the idea there is to utilize our controller as a platform for a lot of different security. Um, uh, applications, I guess I would call them, um, to be able to provide those to the network, you know, across the entire thing, across the network. So instead of it being, as I said, a hardware box, like an IPS box, yeah. it's going to be more of a software platform. And that's, I don't know that anybody else right now is doing anything like that. I mean, frankly, I don't, I know that Cisco is not because they can't. Well, well to our right, mentioned, mentioned they're doing multiple, multiple cores, they're doing inline, 100 gig, 100 gig E. Right, Ethernet. and of course we use Broadcom in our chipsets and the, in our uh, switches, but the fact that you can, um, you know, actually dissolve security into the fabric itself without a bunch of boxes, it's a, that's a different way of doing it. Well, no, you mentioned Art, and, and he's got one of the best raps I've ever heard on security. He's got a good vision for it, very practical as well. He talks about how most of the investment in security historically has gone into, you know, keeping the bad guys out, yep. but they get in. His stat was fascinating. He said, on average, uh, when the bad guy gets in, it takes 416 days for the, the I, customer to realize right. that they're in. So he said HP is essentially shifting its focus and helping clients shift the investment to find out when they've gotten in, use the analytics uh, right. you know, accordingly, right. and really try to understand the anatomy of right. that hack in a much, much better way. So. Well, and remember, because a lot of attacks really are low-lying, right? They, they hang out for a while and then they pop up when desired, right, right by the, by the um, perpetrator. And so that has to be, again, back to the fabric itself has to be secure. It has to sense these things. It, it has to be able to sense that there's a DOS attack that's occurring or that there's you know malware that's beginning to propagate across the network. And you can't do that by just constantly you know, having sniffers. You've got to have a fabric that is secure in and of itself and you do have to have wonderful analytics that can compile that information and go, we've seen that pattern before, we know what that means, and then dynamically modify the, the network configuration to stop it, right? That's That's the, the must-have solution. That is a, That to me is the direction because we were just talking earlier with the customer, you know, they've had uh, malware and it's got an update from McAfee and it was in there for three months. Yeah. It's like the fingerprint just yeah. didn't connect. It's like, it's like right. whoa. Yeah, so, that's exactly what happened. Huge issue. So we are we're running out of time, Kathy, but I want to ask you one question. We just had Sargulai on. He's got this, you know, pan HP view yes. of with cloud. You are kind of looking up. You have a pan HP view from the network side. Yes. So you have to play in a lot of different worlds within the company security. Right. So what is what is your landscape? How do you look at the that the trends of software defined? Uh -huh. Fill in the blank. Right. Storage, servers, networking. You've got Moonshot very disruptive. Right. You got fabrics on your end. Right. You're kind of a little bit of security. Right. You've got multiple, you know, multiple great hardware, good software. You're what kind of yeah. the mayor of networking in every solution. And right? my so, name is Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you got to check so. in. You got to, you got to check in with all these different groups right. Right. and put all right. those solutions well, in there. So, yeah. what's yeah. your view of the, the world that, that we're living in right now? So. So I think it really is all about the application. Whether the application is you know, a business application or whether it's going to the cloud, the network has to have the tools and be responsive to those. And, and, and it can't be done in a manual fashion anymore. It's got to stop. And the only way to really enable new applications to happen quickly enable the cloud to actually allow people to use the cloud and for people to create private clouds 
is to change the paradigm of that network. And that's really what we're trying to do with our software-defined networking, is to make sure that when an application is deployed, when an individual comes on the network, when there's bad things happening, the network dynamically knows itself, can sense it, and modify its behavior to match that requirement. So that's the idea behind it. Awesome. Whether it's load balancing for the cloud, whether it's security for BYD, BYOD, or whether it's a link session, whatever it is, you've got to be able to support There's that. a lot of diversity at the edge of the network. Yes. It's almost like access methods from the old yeah. days, right? Yes. So you have different access points. True. You need to be secure. So that's the world we're living in. That's the way you see it. Yes. Wow, and so what's your key milestones for the next 12 months? What's your, you know, your, what's your goals for the group? Well, um, for the next 12 months, I mean, the first thing is we got to ship our SDN controller, so that's happening, just want to make sure that happens. And then I think after that, it's working with partners to create new applications to offer our customers. And we've already met with several partners here at the show to do, the, to do exactly that. And there's some really creative things that can be done now with um, our, our APIs that could be I mean, th there's some things that you're going to see that you would never have thought about using SDN for. I predict that there will be a an explosion of these applications. So let's talk about quickly OpenStack because that's been some hot hotbed yes. with SDN. Yeah. OpenStack HP is really yeah. deep in. We support it. You guys have made some good calls with OpenStack. It's yes. now the ecosystem of choice. That's right. Even though it might be still in its formative years or months of <laughs> developing, yeah. but you guys are there. What's how does that playing into your roadmap? I mean, right. obviously it's. it's pretty important. Right, so OpenStack is one of the orchestration capabilities that our SDN controller supports. So if you're a cloud provider and you're developing using OpenStack, right, to create your cloud, and you want to have the network controlled uh, through the OpenStack um, uh, pl platform, you can do that using our product and with its OpenStack uh, APIs. So that's completely available, and that's our focus has been on OpenStack for the cloud, cloud orchestration, and our SDN um, applications using the APIs for other purposes. So you're talking about, your comment earlier about the things that we're going to be doing with APIs sort of caught my attention. Yeah. So, so you're talking about potentially <coughs> accessing granular services through those APIs, right. turning, turning the network into an API, essentially. Right, I mean, basically, you know, a network that doesn't require human intervention, machine-to-machine -machine behavior, right? That, that really has, you see it in other technologies. You see it in storage. Why not the network? Why not the network? So that's the goal. That's the goal. And I think you'll see a lot of them. Oh, you heard it here in the queue. Bethany Mayer, Senior yeah. Vice President, General Manager of the Networking Group within HP. Talking about fabrics for styles of IT. No more manual policy enforcement. All dynamic. A future of a intelligent edge with security. HP Networking is, is powering it all. And thanks for coming on the Cube again. Thank Great you. to have you. This is the Cube. We'll be back with more interviews after the short break. We're going to have uh, Roger Levy come on. Craig Nunez. George Kadif is coming on. Um, he's heading up the software group. He'll be on at four o'clock. It'll be his first time on theCUBE, so if you're watching, stay on until four, uh, through, through four o'clock, and, and uh, here's those great interviews. We'll be right back after this short break.